thing around his early 20s, around my age, me and my brother. And one of the first points I want to bring up is that as we grow older, and I want to make sure that all of us kids in the back hear this, as we get older, we start to begin to gain responsibility. It may not be becoming the king of a, a new nation, but we start taking on new responsibilities. Sure, it may not start when you're four, but by the time you become eight, and especially in gatherings like this, if you look around, you can see a lot of small children. And the older, if you are older than them, and you spend time with them, you will become an example for them. And so those are one of the few, one of the few responsibilities that we begin to, get, begin to gain as we grow older. And of course, eventually, we have to prepare ourselves for the responsibilities that our parents currently have. And so one of those things is not only taking care of the children around us, but also beginning to begin a family of our own. Be, begin to start serving the church as our parents do right now. And so in the same way, Solomon begins to take uh, the role of king from his father David. The second thing, I'll try to keep it quick because I know we're hungry. <laughs> in chapter yeah, 2, <laughs> one of the first things that Solomon does when he becomes king, and know at this point David is very, very old. He is close, and so this is why we're, we need to find a new king. And there's a lot of complications with that, but I might get into that later. Is that David is close to his death. And so one of the first things Solomon does we read in chapter 2, when the time drew near for David to die, he gave charge to Solomon, his son. I'm about to go the way of all the earth. And so Solomon goes, or David calls his son to him, and he gives him advice. And he said, so be strong, act like a man, and observe what the Lord God, the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regula regulations as written the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go, and the Lord may keep his promise to me. If your descendants watch how they live, they walk faithfully before me in all their heart and soul, you will never fail to have successor on the throne of Israel. So when the first thing Solomon does is take advice from his parents, from his dad, David, and so one of the things that we have to know, especially one of the great things about trips like this, is there is an exceeding amount of wisdom around us. You have so many, even not just from your own parents, but so many all older people around you that have years of wisdom that we don't have. And I'm not calling you old. You even made a, you even made a face. I'm, I'm saying this in a respectful way. <laughs> And so that's why we need to cherish trips like these. We need to be able to spend time with the people around us and learn from them. I know one thing that I'll miss when I get older is being able to spend time with my dad, spend time with my mom. And although there are times where I'll have conversations with them that I don't want to have, <laughs> like, oh, hey, so you came back from the Philippines. Did you meet anyone nice? <laughs> Those conversations, although I might want not to have them, they are something I will miss, something that I need to cherish, that I, that I need to listen to. And so, of course, we all know Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, honor your father and mother so you may live long in the land the Lord has given you. And so we must honor our parents. We must listen to them. Now, there is a small... I guess I'll get into it. One of the complications of finding the new king was there was actually a lot of David's sons. And they all wanted to be, well, king. And so there were a lot of struggles, a lot of conflicts that happened. And so now that Solomon was to become king, the original reason Solomon was to become king was announced because one of his brothers, uh, what was it? Uh, not Absalom. Adonijah. Well, Absalom was one of them. 
But Adonijah in chapter 1 basically decides, I'm going to go over here, we're going to uh, slaughter animals, and we're going to pronounce that I am king. And he brings people with him, and he decides, I'm going to pronounce that I'm king. And of course, uh, Nathan, Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, hear about this. And so they go to David, and they tell him, hey, uh, isn't Solomon supposed to be king? And so David brings together, and they start celebrating Solomon as king. And so one thing David goes over in chapter 2 is basically ways for Solomon to uh, come... Uh, make sure his kingdom stands strong to keep reins on his kingdom and so he basically gives him a list of people to watch out for and people to keep an eye on so he goes over oh do you know this person he did these things to me during my reign and so keep a watch on him you're a wise person so make sure he does not go to his <laughs> let me read uh i don't know how to put it as poetically Deal with him according to your wisdom, who do not let his gray head go down to the grave in peace. Yep. So he says things like that. Look at him. Deal with him accordingly. Don't let them be, uh, don't let them live in peace. Because if you do, your kingdom might be in jeopardy. <laughs> and so the interesting thing that Solomon has, I know, we talked a little bit about this in Sabbath school, but... Uh, later on, Solomon talks to his mother. And so, uh, Adonijah, one of the person who wanted to become king but didn't because David proclaimed it, proclaimed Solomon as king, basically goes up to Bathsheba, uh, Solomon's mom, and says, Hey, there was a. There was this, uh, I don't know how to put it. Shulamite? There was the Shulamite, yeah. And she basically cared for David in uh, his age. And so they, he, uh, David, King David took a liking to her. And so Adonijah, in a very sneaky way, goes up to Bathsheba and says, Would you give her to me as a wife? Can you ask Solomon to give this woman, this Shumamite, that David, uh, that David loved, to me? And basically... What this would mean is it could cause a revolution. If one of the women that David loved is now with Adonijah, would that make him the rightful king? Would become the question, because at this point, David is dead. And so, Bathsheba does go to Solomon and does ask, Then Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak to him for Adonijah. The king stood up to me here, bowed down to her, and sat down on his throne. He had a throne brought for the king's mother, and she sat down at his right hand. And so you can see that Solomon still respects and honors his parents. He brought a whole throne for his mother to sit on. But of course, the request she's about to give. Uh, I have one small request to make of you, she said. Do not refuse me. And the king replied, make it, my mother. I will not refuse you. And so Solomon respects his mom to the point that he thinks, whatever request you'll ask, I can grant it. It will be no problem. But of course, it is something that will, could jeopardize his kingdom. So she said, let Abishag the Shumamite be given in marriage to your brother Adonijah. King Solomon answered his mother, why do you crest Abishag the Shumamite for Adonijah? You might as well request the kingdom for him. After all, he is my older brother. Yes, for him and for Abiathar the priest and Joab son of Zariah. And those were the people that were supporting Adonai. And so, there is a difference between honoring your parents and obeying every single thing that they say. Amen. And of course. Amen. It's true. Of course. <laughs> all of our parents are God fearing people. <laughs> And for the most part, we should pay attention to what they say and obey them. We're not perfect. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%.
<laughs> oh, we know. We <laughs> the last thing that Solomon did, it, that the Wii U should also do, is one thing that he is known for. Of course, he is the wisest man, the wisest king. And how did he gain this wisdom? Well, he asked the Lord. You can see him do that. And uh, 2 Kings chapter 3, we'll start in verse 4. This is the king went to Gibeon to, to offer sacrifices, for that was the most, most important high place. And Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you, and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him, yeah. and given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child, and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart, to govern your people and distinguish between right and wrong, who is able to govern this great people of yours. And so he asked the Lord, and the Lord goes on, the Lord is pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you have not, since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, but there will never have been anyone like you nor will there ever be. Because he didn't ask for gold, he didn't ask for a long life, he asked for wisdom. And as I said before, we youth are beginning to take on responsibilities. And sometimes we may not know how to fulfill these responsibilities. So at that point, there will come a time when not even the wisdom of your parents will be able to help you. So at that point, you go to the Bible, you go to God, you ask Him for wisdom. Amen. Psalm himself in Proverbs says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but the foolish despise wisdom and instruction. And again in Proverbs 2, verse 3, Yes, if you, yes, if you call out for discernment, lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. Amen. It is hard, to, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that if we did not fear God, that if we did not fear our parents and honor them, that we would not have learned anything from this weekend, not learned anything from Sabbath, not learned anything ever. And so, the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of being able to fulfill these responsibilities that we have is to love everything and respect our God. Amen. And so those are the three things that we youth have to take and consider. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, let's bow our heads and close out this seven. Lord, thank you for this trip. Thank you for the wonderful church family that you've blessed us with, oh God. Amen. And we know that you have only more blessings to give us from this point onward. Please be with all of us as we go throughout this time, throughout this transition. Please, we fear you, Lord. We honor you. Allow your wisdom to come unto us. Allow your Holy Spirit to be within us so that we may walk your path. Please bless the rest of this trip. Let it be a learning experience for us. Let's not close, your, close our eyes to our parents and to you, but to open them and respect you fully. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen.